When it comes to stool testing here at the facility, um, we tend to use a, a test from Genova Diagnostics, which is called the GI Effects. The GI Effects is a stool test um, taken at home with a kit that we'll actually have sent straight from the lab or you know pick up at the office and take home, and it's a self-collection over the course of three days. Um, there's a reason that I'll do three-day collection instead of a one-day, which also is offered just because sometimes when it comes to different infections and other sorts of some parasitic worms and things like that when we get a one-day collection sometimes we'll miss something so with that three-day collection we just have a much better chance of finding an infection if it's there um, just broadly when we think about the gi effects um, genova likes to categorize the test under three big overarching themes and it's digestion and absorption that's the D, they call it the DIG framework, D-I-G. You have digestion and absorption, you have inflammation, immunology, and then the G is the gastrointestinal microbiome. So when we think about digestion, different markers that the test is gonna look at is pancreatic elastase. How well is your pancreas um, producing enzymes to help with parts of digestion? We're gonna look at fecal fats. Not only fecal fats, but we'll break down different types of fecal fats, whether it be cholesterol in the stool or whether it be a phospholipid or you know different types of fats like that. And then we're also gonna look at products of protein breakdown, which can be elevated in people who have poor um, absorptive or digestive digestion capacity, um, potential low enzyme function, things like that can also contribute to having increases in those levels. Um, and you know, big thing when we think about digestion is, can I break things down? Can I pull them into my cells? And then can I use that stuff to create me? And so often, you know, we hear you are what you eat, but what we always say is you are what you absorb. Um, and the GI effects has a really nicely built panel where we're gonna look at quite a few different markers of your ability to produce the necessary um, chemicals to properly digest your food. When we think about inflammation and immunology, when we go into the I part of the DIG framework, um, we're looking at specific markers. Um, one of them is called calprotectin. You know, calprotectin is now being widely accepted as a non-invasive marker for inflammatory bowel disease. Um, and so that's a great marker that our panel assesses to try to rule out whether someone who comes in with certain GI complaints might have, you know, something more um, aggressive going on, such as a Crohn's disease or, or an ulcerative colitis. When we see elevations in that that inflammatory marker, calprotectin, that gives us a hint to keep digging into uh, potential inflammatory bowel disease. We're also looking at a marker called eosinophil protein X. So your body makes eosinophils in response to different types of uh, environments. You could have a, an environmental allergy, you could have a food allergy, you could have a parasite. Um, you know, so when we see EPX and the uh, eosinophil protein X, what we really are thinking about is a potential food allergy if we don't see a parasitic infection as we get down into the microbiome. Um, another marker that we're going to look at when it comes to the immunology portion of the GI effects test is something called secretory IgA. So secretory IgA is, a, is part of our immune system and it's actually a, a, a immunoglobulin, so a protein that's secreted by mucus secreting glands. Specifically secretory IgA that is measured in the GI effects is what is produced by the epithelial cells of the GI tract. So we a lot of times will see either large increases or decreases associated with things like leaky gut or you know, uh, intestinal hyperpermeability or food uh, sensitivities or intolerances. Um, and we'll really look at that marker, the SIGA, as, a, as kind of an idea about the status of the mucus secreting um, system within our GI tract and we want to have a healthy robust response without an over exuberant response measuring that secretory IgA gives us kind of a good idea about um, immune tolerance in the GI tract specifically and then as we get into the um, a few other markers as it relates to inflammation and we're looking at enzyme function through markers like beta glucuronidase you know beta glucuronidase is associated with having higher levels of of circulating estrogens and different 
hormones like that. And it tells us when we see elevations in that enzyme that we might be struggling to detoxify, to properly eliminate the, the stuff going through our system. So we look at that marker beta-glucuronidase not only as a, an inducible enzyme by, the, by a healthy gut microbiome, so say your beta-glucuronidase is very low, that kind of tells us hmm, there might be some issues with the microbiome not producing or, or creating the environment for us to have that enzyme. On the flip side, when beta-glucuronidase gets really high, we start to, that, that is a hint of ours because glucuronidation is part of our liver detoxification, one of the pathways. We know that when beta-glucuronidase is elevated, that detoxification pathway is either overburdened or it's not working properly. And we can do things to support you farther upstream so that the beta-glucuronidase will start to normalize. As we get into kind of the last big part here, when I'm just going through the report, um, which they have a brand new report now, which is super handy. Um, you know, we're also, as, as part of these uh, different metabolites we're looking at, they're also going to be looking at short-chain fatty acids. You know, say someone gets a lot of gas or bloating when they eat fiber, what do we tend to do? Avoid fiber. Well, fiber is a, certain types of fiber are considered food for the microbiome, for the critters that live in your colon. So if we're living under a state of inflammation, bloating, pain, whenever we eat fiber, we're probably avoiding it, then the problem is it's hard to get ahead of that and start to have a good, well-producing microbiome because we're starving the microbiome by avoiding the fiber. So one of the markers that we can look at is in the short chain fatty acids is what types of products are breakdown products are coming from your digestive capacity. And if we have, you know, low levels of short chain fatty acids, we know that you are not feeding the cells in your colon, the colonocytes. So we need to make sure that we have nice levels of these short chain fatty acids while also having good ratios of, of not only the most common one we think of, which is N-butyrate, but also of two other short chain fatty acids called acetate and propionate. So we're looking at the balance between all of those um, short chain fatty acids to kind of get an idea of um, what is happening from the from the stuff that's going into your body, what types of breakdown products are being produced. So that's going to be a huge marker on the GI effects is just looking at that uh, the short chain fatty acids. And then the third part, the big part where we always get excited with the GI effects is how Genova uses polymerase chain reaction, you know, high level DNA sequencing technology to really analyze the genetic sequences of the bugs in the GI tract. Traditional stool culture techniques tend to miss a lot of things because a lot of the critters in our GI tract are actually more attracted to low oxygen environments. So then, you know, that we pass the excrement, we take the stool, wipe it onto a plate to try to grow it out. And in that higher oxygen environment, sometimes a lot of the bugs that are inside of our guts tend to not show up. So now we can't see them on a stool culture. What Genova does is takes all of the DNA from either living or dead bacteria and actually quantifies it and, and shows, you know, multiple different phyla, multiple different families of bugs, and we get to see a real number of each one. So it's great for looking at, you know, dysbiosis and you know, seeing hints of potential small intestinal bacterial overgrowth and stuff like that. What I really like is as more and more research comes out regarding certain um, probiotic strains and their health effects, certain dysbiotic patterns, aka your gut is out of whack or you know you have a, an uneasy gut, um, now there's starting to be more and more data coming out showing associations between certain elevations in gut critters and certain end stage uh, conditions, um, including things like anxiety, depression, um, overactive thought tendencies, and then of course GI, effect, GI problems, uh, skin problems, and things like that. Um, so it's very cool that we can get a real-time, full quantification, full count of exactly what is in our stool. On top of the uh, looking at the genetic sequencing, Genova does do a traditional stool culture because we will tend to find 
um, bacteria in that and we want to we want to at least see if there's any sort of infections in that way because if there are like candida or like a fungal or a yeast species present when they get spread on the culture plate those types of things tend to grow out so we can still see that so what I, that's what i really like about this test is yes we're going forward and doing the genetic sequencing with this microbiome to get a real-time count but we are also going to that next step that previous step really and doing a traditional culture technique and we find potential pathogens and infections all the time on the on the stool culture so it's a very nice little add-on to the test um, there's a full parasitology microscopic as well as pcr so that genetic sequencing looking for any parasites as well um, i love that because sometimes a microscope can pick up things that PCR can't and vice versa. And what Genova does is they do both. So if you have a parasite or there's some sort of GI pathogen, in all likelihood, this test is going to be able to find it, especially when ordered in the three-day collection. Um, you can add things onto the stool test. In this particular um, test, we actually added on H. pylori. I was worried that the patient might have a, an infection of a bacterium in her stomach causing a little bit of these symptoms of you know, GERD or heartburn. So we actually added on a test looking directly for H. pylori. We can examine proteins that resemble zonulin. Zonulin is a is a marker known to be associated with leaky gut. Um, that's a protein family that can be measured and there's a few other types of add-ons. Like if we're really worried about a yeast infection, we can not only do the yeast culture that is provided in every GI effects, but we can go above and beyond and do something called a potassium hydroxide um, yeast where we're looking actually at a culture with different chemicals and really trying to pull out any sort of yeast. So, you know, depending on what you have going on, you know, how long your GI issues have been going on or your skin problems or your autoimmune conditions or what have you, um, we will add on things as we need. But typically the, the panel as it, as it stands is a very good, well-balanced um, and, and broad enough panel that we get a ton of actionable intelligence just from the baseline panel, you know? So if you have any more questions about this, you know, reach out. I love talking about the stool test. You can see behind me, they got the large intestine right there. Um, you know, it's one of the huge parts of our practice is helping people with their gut problems. And it's one of the biggest factors in healing that we find is if you can do all the right stuff, you know, and work on your stress and work on underlying infections and this and that. But if you don't address that, that path from your mouth all the way out the backside of your body. If you don't address that, healing typically is not as high as you would want. And I just, I see it as one of the most paramount parts of our physiology is the GI tract, you know? And then that's where, why we get into testing GI tract for all sorts of conditions and all, and all sorts of things that don't seem quite related to the gut, but lo and behold, two thirds to maybe three quarters of your immune system is in the gut and you have the surface area roughly the same size of a tennis court, there's a lot of room for an issue there to cause issues everywhere or anywhere in your body. So, you know, this is a test that we utilize all the time. It's super high end, it's, it's very accurate, and we get a ton of good results based on treating things that we find in the GI effects test.